Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about some geometry practice I-step problems. Now, this video might be a little bit longer, but this is really, really important because we can just about guarantee that one of these types of questions is going to be on your I-step in three weeks. So we need to make sure that we are able to solve these questions. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. You are going to know, go need to get graphic organizer number four. It's just I-step pra practice problems. You also are going to need your reference sheet out because you're going to use the to find your formulas. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. If you need to pause the video, do so now. All right, here's the first part of I-step practice problem number one. It says, Miss Pauline's company makes yarn. She ships the yarn in cube-shaped boxes with side lengths of two feet. She will load these boxes into the back of a truck shaped like the rectangular prism with the dimensions shown in the diagram below. What is the volume in cubic feet of the back of the truck? Now, we need to be very careful because this type of problem has a lot of information in it. First off, yes, this is the back of a truck, but what else was she doing? Well, she's shipping the yarn in cube-shaped boxes, okay? And she's going to load those boxes into the back of this truck, which has this shape, all right? So now, once again, if she's going to load those in the back of this truck, we have to be careful, okay? What is she loading in the back of the truck? Well, she's loading boxes in the back of the truck that have the shape of a cube, right? So that's really important. Also, it says that those cubes, the cube-shaped boxes, have side lengths of two feet, which means each side is two feet. The length, the width, and the height are all two feet. Now, that's really important because that we're going to have to come back to on the second part. So now, first it says... First question, what is the volume in cubic feet of the back of the truck? Well, you have to remember that this is the back of the truck. So this is a volume question. In order to get all your points on your I-step for a volume question, you need to first write down the equation for volume or the formula for volume. And the volume formula can be found in your reference sheet. It should be volume equals length times width times height. And if you do that, you would get one point. The second thing you need to do is plug in the numbers. So volume equals 10 feet times 28 feet times 6 feet. Okay. So now you need to go ahead and do those things. The second thing you would need to do is to go ahead and show your work. Now, you've already have two points. There's two more available. So we need to go ahead and show our work. So volume equals, first we do 10 times 28, which gives us 280 times 6 which means our volume is going to equal 280 times 6, which if you have your calculator, gives you 1,680. But we need our label. Remember, if you go back up here, they are feet. Volume is feet cubed because we're multiplying three different things, and it's a three-dimensional shape. So volume equals 1,680 feet cubed. That is your first answer. However, there is a second and third part on the next slide. So do not forget that we had this box up here. Remember, you're going to put those boxes inside the back of our truck. So let's move on. Okay? Okay. So this second part says, how many boxes can Miss Pauline load in the truck? Now, remember, the truck was 1,680. Sorry, wrong thing. 1,680 cubic feet, right? But remember, she was going to put boxes inside that truck. And remember, if we... We talked about our boxes already. Our boxes were, I just told you to remember them, in the shape of a cube, which I can't draw a cube very well, with all the side lengths of two, which means we need to find the volume of that box to figure out how much space it takes up. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to write, once again, volume equals length times width times height. So volume equals, and it said all the side lengths are two. So we're going to use two times two times two. And if you do 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. So all of those are 8 cubic feet. Okay, so 8 feet cubed. Now, it says how many boxes can she fit in the truck? Well, remember, the truck was 1,680. Our boxes are 8 feet cubed. So how do we figure out how many are going to fit in there? Well, it's very easy. We're just going to divide. We're going to take 1,680, and we're going to divide that by the 8 to determine how many will fit in there. If we do that, we'll find out that 2. I'll go ahead and keep to dividing. Bring down my 8, 1. Bring down my 0. 
210, okay? 210 boxes. So the answer is 210 boxes. So remember, my back of my truck, then I have little boxes are going in the back of the truck and I can fit 210, and now I have my third part. Miss Pauline packs 60 balls of yarn in each cube-shaped box. How many total balls of yarn can Miss Pauline load in the truck? Well, <clears throat> we already know that she can put 210 boxes in the truck, and what it says is each box has 60 balls of yarn. So if each box has 60 balls of yarn, we need to go ahead and multiply 210 times 60 to figure out how many total will fit inside the back of the truck. So remember, each box has 60. We have 210 of them. If you multiply those together, you're going to get 12,600. And your answer is 12,600 balls of yarn. Now, notice everything that I did. Yes, I used a calculator for some of it, but everything I did, I wrote down and showed. Remember, every time I did a Find, found the volume, I wrote down the equation, I plugged the numbers into the equation, and then I solved and made sure that I put my labels. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your practice I-step problem number one. We're going to continue. I'm going to show you two more. I'm going to go a little bit faster this time. Well, let's move on. Practice no problem number two. It's a very similar problem. The big toy company is determining how many individual toys will fit in the shipping box shown in the diagram below. Each individual toy package is a cube with a side length of 4 inches. Wait, cube, side length of 4 inches. Once again, here's our cube, and it's saying all the sides are 4, which means hmm, we want to figure out how many of these guys fit into the big box. That's the same thing we just did on the last one. So how many individual toy packages will fit in the shipping box? Well, we can't really do that unless we find out the size of the big box first. So let's show our formula and figure out our work. So it says show all our work. Well, the volume of the big box is 12 times 20 times 28. All right, so you need to go ahead and, oops, and I've, I messed up. I already missed a point. I need to say volume equals length times width times height. Volume equals 12 times 20 times 28, okay? And you're going to go ahead and multiply those together. 12 and 20 is 240, and 240 times 28 is going to give us a very big number of 6,720. And you might want to just double check. Make sure, plug it into your calculator again. Make sure Mr. Williams is correct, but I am, okay? And it, our label is inches cubed this time. So we need that first. So that's an important number. Now, we also need to find the volume of our little boxes to figure out how many can go inside. So we're going to take volume equals length times width times height. Volume equals 4 times 4 times 4, which that's 64 inches. Remember it says up there on the top it's inches, 4 inches, inches cubed. Now we need to figure out how many <coughs> 64s fit in 6,720. So what are you going to do? Well, very simple. You're going to go ahead and divide. 6,720, and you're going to divide that by 64, and you should get a total of 105. So how many of those boxes are going to fit in the big box? 105 boxes. That's how many. And that's actually your answer. If there's a space for you to put it in, that's what you should do. It's 105 boxes. Ladies and gentlemen, that was example two. I have one more. Now, <clears throat> this one is more like what iStep will do to you. They took away all of the pictures. So now you have to visualize what's going on. So Ben's baseball team is packing up bats into boxes to take with them to the state tournament next weekend. So they have a bunch of bats. They're going to put them in boxes. Each bat box, so each box, has measurements of 3 and an eighth, 4 and 3 fourths, and 1 and 2 fifths. What is the volume of each bat box? So part A says we need to figure out that volume. So part A. We're going to do volume equals length times width times height. Volume equals 3 and an eighth times 4 and 3 fourths times 1 and 2 fifths. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are allowed to use a calculator, but your calculator will not be able to do fractions on your I step. Now, you can go ahead and multiply them like you normally would in, by turning them into improper fractions, or you can do what I'm about to show you, which is simply changing those fractions into decimals. That's 
times 4.75, and that we're going to multiply that by 1.4. And I know that because I know how to change my fractions to decimals. So I'm going to go ahead and put that number into my calculator. You don't have to. You can do it a different way. But I'm going to put it in the calculator because then it makes it easier for me, and I can double check it. And that's going to get me some really, really big number. And I'm going to be honest with you, that didn't work very well because I get 20.78125. Yuck. That's weird. Okay. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and do what I showed you and what I thought I could do. All right. So let's change this to improper fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, 20, 3 times 8 is 24 plus 1. That's 25 over 8 times 6, 19 over 4 times 7 over 5. Can I pre-simplify anything? Yes. 1, 5. Um, let's see. Can I do anything else? Nope. It doesn't look like it. Oh, that really stinks. So 5 times 19 times 7 is 665. And that's going to be over 32. And then you're going to have to divide that. And that will give you 20. And 20 times 32 is 64. So that's going to be 25 30 seconds left over. Yuck. So we have 20 and 25 30 seconds. And that is feet cubed. That's how big our bat box is. Yuck. Now, once again, you could have put it in with a, with a decimal, and that's okay. If you would have, you would have gotten 20.78. Let me go ahead and do it one more time. 3.125 times... 4.75 times 1.4, you would have gotten this, and I'll put it down here, you would have gotten this if you would have done it with decimals. Now, that's okay, because it says each bat has a volume of 2 and 4 fifths feet cubed. Using your findings in part A, how many bats will fit into each box? So you can either do the following, 20 and 25 over 32 divided by 2 and 4 fifths, to figure out how many will fit, or you can use the other number and divide that by 2.8. Okay, if I use that, you will find out that you get some weird number like 7.421875 bat boxes. Now that is weird, okay? That is weird. That doesn't work very well. So, how many bats will fit into each box? Well, let's be honest. Can you put part of a bat in a box? Can you put part of a bat in a box? What are you going to do? You're going to cut a bat up? That doesn't make any sense. So the answer is really just seven. Seven bats in a box. Okay? And that's your answer. I know that one was a little confusing. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a few to try on your own. Good luck.